Hey, what's going on YouTube? Back again with another video. Okay, so today I thought I'd uh, show you something that's uh, probably a little bit interesting to uh, Amiga fans out there. And um, what I've got in front of me here is a uh, original OS 3.1 boxed version of the operating system. And uh, just wanted to show you, uh, basically going to do an unboxing and show you what come, what is uh, included inside. Now, um, a lot of you guys may not have actually seen this particular edition of the software. Um, typically when you uh, purchased OS 3.1, uh, you would get something like this, these discs, um, which is the, uh, the kind of the more common uh, SCOM uh, discs that were released by SCOM. And uh, for those people that don't know their Amiga history, uh, Commodore obviously uh, ended up going bankrupt. Um, I think sometime around uh, 1991 or 92 time frame. Um, the actual year does uh, escape me a little bit. And uh, ESCOM basically took over uh, the assets of Commodore and um, they continued releasing um, some software at least for a short time after the, uh, the buyout. And um, as mentioned, this is the typical set of OS 3.1 discs that you would get. Now, I don't have uh, a box, so I can't show you what it looks like, but um, this is kind of the more uncommon uh, Commodore edition, um, which actually wasn't released by Commodore themselves, even though there is a Commodore logo on the actual box itself. Uh, it was actually released by Village Tronic, and Village Tronic was actually the company that released the Picasso uh, retargetable graphics cards and also the Picasso 96 software. So somehow um, it's a little bit fuzzy and, and uh, if any of my uh, viewers that watch this video know more about um, what actually had transpired, but Village, Village Tronic somehow managed to obtain the rights um, to release OS 3.1. So they really um, took over um, the the uh, the operating system for a short time at least before SCOM obviously uh, went and bought Commodore out but uh, they released uh, this particular um, so piece of software and uh, so as you can see it's uh, a fairly kind of chunky uh, box itself and there's some quite a bit of stuff in here and I'm going to show you here in a second but um, looking at the back of the box here and uh, let me just zoom the uh, camera here a little bit get uh, a little bit up close in there uh, as you can see there's a uh, screenshot of OS 3.1 and this is um, for those people that don't know uh, Amigas uh, back in the old days only had a 16 color palette or a 32 color palette I guess but um, this is a retargetable graphics uh, screen mode that um, I guess shows off the Picasso 96 uh, retargetable graphics and as you can see here if I just zoom in a little bit on the blurb um, it basically says, uh, for Amiga 500, 2000, 3000, and 4000, new screen modes and improved support for graphics boards, e.g. Picasso 2, RTG, up to 1600 by 1200 pixels and 256 colors, um, accelerated graphics rendering, CD-ROM support, uh, different language support, data types, Playback of various files with multi-view and data types, online help, um, improved graphical user interface, supports MS-DOS and Atari disks using CrossDOS, and uh, this is kind of the German translation, and as you can see down the bottom here, and I do apologize, uh, the lighting uh, in this room isn't the best at the moment, but um, basically it says... Distributed and manufactured by Village Tronic Marketing in Germany. Um, and uh, there's a couple of little uh, copyright uh, notifications as well. So that's the actual box itself. And uh, I'm just going to zoom back out. So what I'm going to do now is crack this thing open and show you. Um, and on the side here, you've got um, a couple of check marks here. But uh, basically, um, the English language has been kind of ticked off there and this is the they call it the AS320 which is basically the version that you would use or that you would purchase if you had an A500, a 2000 and a 2500. Now uh, to give you some kind of history um, I purchased actually two of these. I actually have another one as well which is identical to this 
And the reason why um, I purchased this obviously was to upgrade my operating system, but it also comes with a Kickstart ROM as well. Um, and uh, since I've, I've subsequently used in a another Amiga that I have, but um, one thing we'll we'll see here in a minute is this particular box. Uh, when I purchased it, I've never actually used it. Now it's obviously been knocked around, and it's uh, it's been sitting in my uh, father's uh, garage in in, in a, a box for about 15 years or 15, 20 years. But um, nothing's actually been used in this particular um, piece of software, and. Uh, I think I must have wanted to upgrade another Amiga to OS 3.1, but um, you know something must have happened, or uh, I just kind of lost interest in, in doing that. So uh, thought that was interesting, and you know one of the other things I will mention is um, back in back in those days, in kind of the early 90s, um, I purchased this from a just a regular PC computer store that sold IBM PCs, um, you know uh, clones, I guess, you know Asus and and um, Acer and, and stuff like that, you know, like a, just a regular computer store, or like a micro center or, or something like that, where you could just uh, b build a PC. There was a, a very small Amiga section where they had probably about, um, you know, uh, an Amiga 2000, a 3000, possibly a 4000 for sale, uh, those types of desktop Amiga computers, as well as some software. And it was all productivity type software. Um, so things like Amiga Vision, Deluxe Paint, Deluxe video um, and also Amiga OS uh, was was sold as well um, up to OS 3.1. So I thought that was pretty cool and um, just you know think about that. I mean, uh, especially in today's um, you know market, that uh, the fact that you could just walk into a store and purchase an operating system for an Amiga is kind of really hard to kind of put your head around. <laughs> quite honestly, um, it's been a certainly a long time since uh, anything. I ever remember was sold in a store that uh, was uh, Amiga based. So, uh, any case, so let's crack this thing open. And uh, basically, this this is just a, a dust cover or, or a, um, an, an outer uh, piece of um, paper, I guess. And I just want to be a little bit careful. It's uh, it's pretty flimsy, but um, here is the box itself. And uh, if we open this up further. Yeah, just bear with me guys because uh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, but so uh, yeah, just pull this open here and inside the first thing you'll notice is you've got uh, a, uh, a Protective cardboard and if you open these up you get your your discs your uh, workbench and, and install discs and as you can see There's the install disc um, The extras the locale and if you look at uh, the stickers on here, uh, it's, it's all copyright to Commodore Amiga. Commodore and Commodore logo is copyright Commodore Electronics. So this is um, all Commodore based, as opposed to the, as mentioned over here, the uh, SCOM discs. And uh, fonts, workbench and storage. So they're the install discs and the workbench discs. And a nice uh, black uh, colored disc rather than the kind of the generic blue that you get with floppy disks uh, back in those days. And uh, they live in there. And then you get a couple of manuals here. Um, this is the DOS manual, OS 3.1. And uh, basically, um, this is a very, very comprehensive guide. It walks you through all the CLI or shell commands that you could p potentially use um, and very, very comprehensive. And again, these are the kind of things that, that are just not made anymore. Uh, when you buy software, you just get a link to download a PDF file or something similar, um, but uh, shows you pretty much everything uh, from a command line perspective, how to edit files, how to use the editors, um, all the command line arguments for all the possible shell commands that you could use and um, very, very, very uh, comprehensive as you can see. And uh, it's a pretty uh, thick manual here. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many pages it is, but there's probably a good 500 or so pages. Um, and then there's a glossary section that talks about all the particular terms that the Amiga uses, things like chip RAM and uh, bridge boards and uh, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. 
And then uh, the next manual is the A-Rex manual. And uh, for, those that don't, for those that don't know, A-Rex was a pretty cool scripting language that the Amiga used. Um, very, very powerful. And uh, I will say that I uh, never used it, <laughs> quite honestly. But uh, there was a lot of productivity software that used uh, had support for A-Rex. And um, uh, even today, you know, the stuff that you uh, see on Aminet uh, has uh, a lot of uh, A-Rex type support. Uh, but uh, there's a, an A-Rex manual that kind of walks you through how to, uh, to use it and what it does. And as you can see, there's an introduction section and getting started and um, all sorts of stuff in there. So uh, pretty cool. And then the last one um, is the workbench manual, and uh, this is probably about the same thickness as the DOS manual, but um, this is basically how to use a workbench and um, the graphical user interface of the Amiga itself, and uh, how to do all sorts of stuff, uh, icons and tool types, and uh, just very, very, again, very, very comprehensive uh, screen modes and... and uh, all sorts of cool stuff, AGA, so there's obviously support for AGA um, in Amiga OS 3.1, um, which is the 256 color screens that you can get on an A1200 or an A4000. Um, but just again, just a boat ton of information and very, very comprehensive. And uh, talks about CrossDOS here, which is the software that allows you to read MS-DOS formatted disks. So that's... Uh, the workbench manual and in here is probably the reason why I actually um, purchased this upgrade or well, one of the reasons and this is an original uh, kickstart 3.1 ROM chip uh, from Commodore so this is not a burnt EEPROM this is the original um, uh, edition I guess a kickstart chip and um, so that's uh, that's that, and I guess, as mentioned, I have two of these uh, 3.1 upgrades uh, boxes, and in the other box, this chip is gone, so I've obviously used it in another machine, which I believe is probably my A3000. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, Kickstart 3.1 chip. Uh, again, nothing really special, but uh, just probably a little bit interesting for those people that uh, have only seen a Amiga kit kind of... Uh, EPROM'd uh, burnt chip with a serial number on it, but uh, this is the original Kickstart 3.1 chip. And this particular thing goes back to um, the type of um, type of uh, uh, box that you want to get, because obviously uh, there's different kind of Kickstarts for an A4000 as opposed to a 3000, um, as opposed to an A500 or a 2000. So uh, Depending on the on the the uh, version that you purchased here would determine the Kickstart ROM that you would get, and uh, it's interesting to note that there's one here for a four thousand, but there's no mention of an A twelve hundred. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, quite interesting as well. And a couple more little goodies in the box itself. Uh, a couple of pieces of paper, um, but uh, here we've got a Amiga OS uh, Quick Start or Quick Reference Guide, and. Um, Pretty much a, a very, very quick guide based off the DOS uh, manual, but um, talks about some of the CLI commands that are kind of important, like alias, assign, uh, CD to change directory, uh, stuff like that. Um, again, very comprehensive. Uh, ed commands for the text editor. And uh, yeah, just... Uh, whole bunch of quick commands to kind of get you going um, which is uh, pretty interesting so there's the quick reference guide and this one here is a village tronic uh, advertisement and basically talks about the Amiga uh, OS 3.1 that uh, that they had brought out and um, Picasso 2 RTG retargetable graphics card um, some software that they brought out called Main Actor Professional, and uh, this is the Ariadne uh, Network Graphics Card. I'm sorry, the Network uh, Card, not the Graphics ne Network Graphics Card, but that's the Sana 2 uh, Zorro based uh, Network Card that uh, Village Tronic had brought out. And on the, on the other side, we've got um, some other hardware that they had released and software. Uh, they had uh, licensed AMAX, and I think they ended up taking over that hardware for a, at least for a short time. 
and uh, they got we got uh, we got TV Paint and Pablo and Liana, which is a uh, parallel kind of device with uh, a quick way. Well, back in those days, uh, one of the quickest ways of getting um, files back and forth between Amigas and Trapfax, which was I guess some kind of faxing software for uh, it back in the day. And down the bottom here, there's some uh, there's an order coupon if you want to order any of those things. Uh, just tick the box and uh, send uh, this in a envelope to uh, Village Tronic in Germany, and uh, they would get back to you. So uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty awesome. That's the Village Post flyer. And the last thing here is um, just a uh, instruction guide, I guess, and um, this talks about the instructions and um, just shows you what to do to install the new chip uh, the kickstart chip and basically goes through the steps of what you need to do and on the other side just talks about on an A2000 and the front here is on an A500 so uh, that's uh, that's the instructions for updating your Kickstart ROM. And uh, that's about it. Uh, recyclable. But yeah, I thought that'd be interesting to uh, the Amiga fans out there. Uh, I ended up posting um, a uh, photograph of this particular box um, on the Commodore Amiga uh, Facebook group and uh, got quite a bit of interest in it. So I thought I'd uh, just make a video of it and show you uh, what it comes with and that's the complete package. So uh, so yeah guys, that's all I got time for for today. Hope you found this interesting. Um, as always, I will uh, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.